Now, Buddha, I pay homage to the blessed, wonderfully enlightened Supreme Buddha. So, pay homage to my teacher, Luke Swami Namukutaya, Manta, may I ask about the heavenly world? Um, yes. Because uh, sometimes it's um, it was mentioned that uh, there are some um, like heavenly worlds. They have there are some wars like they fight in Asras. Um, and I was wondering, like, if the heavenly being have um, developed more good qualities than humans, mm. how it's possible that they fight or those fights, it's not like in the human worlds are like, mm. I don't understand how those beings can have wars. Mm. Yeah, they still fight. <laughs> That's true. But we cannot say that all the heaven, heavenly beings fight. Maybe so. That's what we understand. Uh, and Buddha revealed that. Buddha explained about that. Sometimes the some heavenly beings fight with uh, their enemies, Asuras. And uh, there are also suttas about their fighting. So yeah, they still fight. <laughs> uh, excuse me, Bhante. Uh, can mm -hmm. I add to that, please? Mm -hmm. I, I just thought of uh, something I'd like to add, actually. So yeah, I mean, it's true. It's like you can't say that, you know, just because it's a deva, that it's good. You can't say that just because, you know, it's an asura, it's bad, right? It's all about, uh, like, if they have loba, dosa, moha, in their mind, they have the tendency to do bad things, right? No matter if it's, no matter what species they are, whether it's a human or a deva or an asura or whatever, right? I think that's the way we should look at it, right? So even if, like, even yeah, if we think, that... if we think, uh, whatever beings who are still with defilements they have the yeah right they have uh, whatever the bad things they would do with their defilements then they would go ahead and do it because they are governed and um, uh, controlled by the their defilements we should think about uh, it in that way those beings who are free of defilements they never engage in those things that are to do with defilements. So if if those if a certain group of beings have those defilements uh, of uh, <clears throat> becoming leaders, fighting for authority, um, to um, uh, you know to store power, uh, rulership. So as long as beings uh, hold those defilements, then the, they would do uh, whatever comes in the way, you know, uh, because they are living in those defilements. But still, you see, like, uh, there is a difference of uh, beings uh, who are enveloped in defilements, who are fully immersed in defilements, and also uh between the, the, the other beings who are on the path on the path of abandoning defilements for example uh there was a battle between devas and asuras uh, in the past of course because buddha uh, explained them to us and revealed them to us we know today otherwise we wouldn't know so in that battle um um, the asuras, the enemies of the devas, were chasing after, and uh, so the the god Sakka with his charioteer Matali, 
uh, were running away. And then their path was uh, somewhere, um, there were some trees and uh, there were some nests with some eggs of some birds. And then God Sakka saw that and <clears throat> also heard that all those, uh, <clears throat> the birds were screaming because they were uh, about to be killed by the, those wheels of the chariot. And then God Sakka asked his chariot, Yamatali, to stop suddenly, to stop the vehicle, stop the divine vehicle and turn it back towards the enemies and the god sucker said matali let's go let's go back don't it's it's better uh, better to die better to be defeated better to be killed by our enemies than to destroy the lives of these birds don't know think about that and then <clears throat> Matali, uh, the charity Matali listened to the advice of uh, his leader, God Sakka, and then he turned back his chariot. And the enemy saw the chariot is coming back towards them, the Asuras. And they thought, oh, maybe uh, even though they were running away fearfully last time, maybe now God Sakka is coming back to fight against us. Maybe he has more more army now, <laughs> more power. Maybe he's coming with more power now. So then they were terrified and they went back. They ran away. And that's how Buddha said, that's how God Sakka won that battle that day by the Dhamma. Right? Right, right. Because Sakka is a Sotapanna disciple. Yeah, we don't know yeah. at that time whether he was a Sotapanna or with, um, whether this happened before he became Sotapanna, we don't know. We don't know some battles maybe took place before he became a Sotapanna. We, we don't know those, right? But still Shaka right. was, uh, had very good qualities even before he become a, a follower of the Buddha when he was in the human world. And there are lots of information about him as a human being when he was in the human world. His name was... Uh, 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 a young man Maga and he did like unbelievable good things like without the help of the teachings of a fully enlightened Buddha he himself took up to these beautiful qualities you can read that in the Sakka Sangita just chapter on the God Sakka in the Sangita Nikaya and uh, he, he made some vows that he would never uh, go beyond those vows One of, like some of those were like, uh, I, I would take care of my parents as long as I live. Uh, I, will, I will be generous and not greedy as long as I live. And I will not lie and always speak the truth as long as I live. Uh, I will not get angry as long as I live. If I get angry, I would immediately abandon that anger. So like that. He himself thought of those good qualities and was practicing. And that, that's how he generated good karma as a human being to be reborn in heaven and become the leader of gods, the god Shaka. That happened before he met the Buddha. So even he even before he met the Buddha, he had very good qualities, noble qualities, unbelievable good qualities. So yeah, and Buddha explained, this is how Sakka won that battle that day, and it is through the Dhamma. Dhamma gave him the victory that day. And what is that Dhamma? Sacrificing his own life for the sake of the lives of those tiny birds. So... There are some differences between the human battles and heavenly world battles, and you know. Yeah, Bhante. So I, I mean, Sakka, he's like a, he's like an exceptional god, right? Yeah, but of like, course. Yeah, when you yeah, read about like, his life, yeah, 
you feel like uh, it's a different yeah but different i mean the, the, the other gods like i i don't think they're much different than like other humans right like you take a, like a common human versus like a common god it's yeah, there are mostly the same it's yeah. mostly they're all just trying to please the the five senses right mm. right and if if they have to kill or steal or whatever to please the five senses then they will do so yeah but that's right? the story in the lower heavenly realms right also in the in the higher ones it's not like it's that. a different different story and you don't oh. see any any anything you don't hear anything about fighting and in oh, the brahma worlds and in higher higher heavenly worlds it's a different oh, in the in, in the rupa ones right right Pante? yeah the formless brahmas i see so so Pante, what about this um the karma the karma sugati ones yeah those are the ones i was i was talking about the lower heavenly so, realms so so even like even like paranimita vasavati and yama nimanarati they all they all have these fights uh, mostly we fights hear about world. those fights be in uh, among the heavenly beings in the the lowest kind of uh, chatu maharajika tavatins in that area I see, I see. Yeah, the first two uh, heavenly worlds, Chatu Maharaj and Tavatins. Right, but I, I think that like the tendency to fight and steal and all that, like do all the unwholesome things, even if, if it's a karma loka, I think the tendency is always that's, there. That's the main reason, yeah. Right. Because it's yeah. a karma realm. Karma loka, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a so realm uh, yeah, yeah. governed by the sense yeah. pleasures yeah. Uh, and, sense and, desires. yes yes and, and actually Bhante, you know something else i that came to mind it's you know you know how the other religions they always worship a god because they think that god is good mm -hmm. right so actually like if you actually look at the full picture it's like they're all being deceived right it's not that the god is good it's just that they have got a lot of things because they have done good karma in their past lives Mm. but once they're there they might not be good right because yeah they're like, just as selfish as yeah, as long as a being holds defilements yeah uh, we normally um like if it is a religious leader uh, if, if that being or that person is a religious leader, um, one should go for refuge to somebody. The wise way to think is that why we should go for refuge to somebody? It's because we need a refuge. Why we need a refuge? Because we are helpless. Why are we helpless? Because we are subject to be reborn in bad worlds. We are subject to suffering in this uh, conditioned world. We are, we are subject to aging, sickness, death. We are subject to mental and physical suffering. That's the meaning of being helpless. <clears throat> we we don't know how to control our defilements we are carried away by the defilements and uh, we 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 suffer due to regret and remorse our mind is restless and um, we are sometimes stressed so that's the meaning of helpless yes Pante, so and now just... and we know why why these things are happening to us? Because the reason for all those results is because we are living with defilements. We are living with defilements. Now we need a refuge. So where, where we think that that refuge exists? Where can we go for refuge for, to, to find solutions for those problems? Can we find those solutions from somebody who is all, also immersed in defilements? No, can Pante. we find uh, solutions? No. 
because because we know whether it is a brahma whether it is a um a higher god a deva a human or any visible or invisible being doesn't matter if that person is living with defilements as we are living now that person even though we haven't seen that person even though we haven't talked to that person we know for sure that being is suffering too so there is no point of going for refuge to such a being right because right. that being is also helpless in the same, same situation like us so if we need if anybody who is suffering needs uh, a solution a refuge definitely he or she should go for refuge to somebody who is freed from defilements the root cause of suffering and that only being you see in this world is the fully enlightened buddha who is free from defilements and who can teach the path to humans and de- devas to liberate to be liberated from defilements and then that makes full sense right because now we know he can guide us we know that that being can guide us because that pe- that being already has escaped from defilements and escape from suffering so that is why we go for refuge to the buddha that is why even gods go for refuge to the buddha that's why even brahmas go for refuge to the buddha okay rob do you have a question uh yes bhante i was just wondering uh, how many years have you been teaching the deep dhamma to this toronto group and have you ever uh previously taught the uh, kundaliya sutta to the toronto group if i have had done it before yes no this is the first time you are the luckiest <laughs> <laughs> and how many years bante how many years uh, i didn't uh, normally i don't have a good memory <laughs> i don't remember especially the years and those things years roads uh, names of people i am very very weak so this is the first time you've taught the uh, kundalini sutta yeah interesting okay thank you beautiful eh yeah lucky yeah i'm <laughs> lucky mm. i am lucky too because um, uh because you are listening i was able to teach and i was able to collect the dhamma dana merit so i am lucky too and i am lucky especially because uh, my teacher has taught everything um about suttas and so that helps us a lot when we were uh doing dhamma propagation sharing the teachings Uh, yeah we should be very grateful to our teacher luxavi nansa and also he has translated the entire sutta pitaka so we always uh, read those suttas and and also he has taught those suttas in simple singhalese language so when we teach other people in a different language we still go back to those original uh, you know the sermons uh, delivered by my teacher and that's uh, amazingly helped us thank you bhante yeah and phong you have a question thank you bhante um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. my question is about uh, nibbana bhante um if everything is conditioned if everything condition is impermanent mm. this um any bana is unconditioned so mm. is is still in can we say any bana is permanent yeah any bana is permanent that's how we say because uh that that the meaning of that is saying any bana permanent is um once that peace is attained 
the liberation of defilements is attained the the zero craving of the mind is attained it it never goes away it never changes and the being who achieved that doesn't have anything to do more to be liberated from suffering that's the meaning of saying nibbana is permanent uh, so that being doesn't have to do anything more again and that being has liberated from rebirth sickness and death and it is it is permanently uh, and also good to understand that when you say nibbana is permanent that is not that's not a place that's a mental state you should misunderstand that nibbana is permanent and so it is a permanent place where the people who have attained nibbana go and stay permanent you know that's that's not the the case so nibbana is permanent in the sense that the person who has achieved uh, liberation of defilements uh, and it will never change it will never change uh, and that being has liberated from suffering at the same time the person has has achieved nibbana and that is that that peace of mind that liberation that true happiness never goes away it it is permanent as long as that lifespan of that being um it is not is not over that peace that inner peace that realization will be with that being and with the final passing away when the life span is over of that liberated being the everything uh, will be extinguished and cool and calmed okay good Nibbana. Nibbana is the best thing in the world, isn't it? All the wise people should uh, should set their goal to achieve Nibbana. One day, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, so a friend actually forwarded me a sutta, okay. and I don't quite understand this sutta. Mm -hmm. And I tried to find it in Anguttara Nikaya. It says here in the Sutta, Anguttara Nikaya 3, mm -hmm. uh, Sutta number 143. But I couldn't find it. Mm -hmm. However, the Sutta is like this. A uh, possess of five qualities, a sick man is of much help to himself. What five? He knows what medicine is good for him. He knows the right measure in his treatment. He takes the medicine. He describes his illness to the one who nurses him out of kindness, saying, in going, it goes like this. In coming, it comes like this. While there, it is like this. And he is one who endures the various pain of the sickness. Mm -hmm. So, Oh, it, 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 is, it is a very simple sutta. Hmm? I don't know why it's hard for you to understand. It's one of the easiest sutta. Maybe it's, uh, I had some translation problems. Maybe Is it about the five spiritual faculties, Monday? No, it, it, it's, it is about uh, uh, a normal sick person. So, it's just uh, Possess how many qualities? qualities? How many qualities of that person? Five. Process of five qualities. It's not in the Anguttara third. It's in the Anguttara book of the fives. I yeah. I, so you have five qualities there. Yeah, it says five qualities. 
Okay, so then check uh, Book of the Pious. Yeah. And the name of the sutta is something, uh, try uh, Gilano, Gilano Pataka Sutta. Gilano? Gilano Pataka Sutta. Mm, we can try. We can try to find the sutta and uh, okay. see if we have a better translation. Okay. All right. Thank you, Bande. Okay, so first we learn this. Uh, Suryan, can you read this? Patama Upataka Sutta. Mendicant, a patient with five qualities is hard to care for. What five? They do what is unsuitable. They don't know moderation in what is suitable. They don't take their medicine. Though their care wants what's best for them, they don't accurately report their symptoms by saying when they are getting worse, getting better, or staying the same. And they cannot endure physical pain, sharp, severe, acute, unpleasant, disagreeable, and life-threatening. A patient with these five qualities is hard to care for. A patient with five qualities is easy to care for. What five? They do what is suitable. They know moderation in what is suitable. They take their medicine. Because their care wants what's best for them, they accurately report their symptoms by saying, when they are getting worse, getting better, or saying the same. And they can endure physical pain, sharp, severe, acute, unpleasant, disagreeable, and life-threatening. A patient with these five qualities is easy to care for. This is the sutta, right? Yeah, it sounds <laughs> like it. <laughs> huh? But it's yeah. much more easier to understand here. <laughs> Easy to understand, yeah, yeah. That's why I, I was thinking about a simpler mm. translation. So you are reading the the friend sent to you the, this this part, the second part of the sutta, right, right. And yeah. this is the yeah, the first part of the sutta in the beginning. So this is the name of the sutta, Akara Patamo Pataka Sutta. Okay. Thank so you. It, it's about a normal sick person. And you can understand uh, uh, mm, okay. it's very straightforward and it's talking right. about yeah because there is a series of suttas here and if you go here see the kara too okay this kara too and uh, uh okay mendicants a kara with five qualities is not competent to care for a patient what five they are unable to prepare medicine they don't know what is suitable and unsuitable. So they supply what is unsuitable and remove what is suitable. They care for the sick for the sake of material benefits, not out of love. They are disgusted to remove feces, urine, vomit, or spit. They are unable to educate, encourage, fire up, and inspire the patient with the Dhamma talk from time to time. A carer with these five qualities is not competent to care for a patient. See that? So it's a series uh, of suttas here about a sick person who is easy to uh, be cared and uh, about uh, the people, uh, carers who who treat well mm -hmm. to their sick people. To um, yeah, so it's it's about an ordinary sick person and an ordinary uh, carer, and but still, the if the sick person has good qualities. Yeah. Uh, he will recover from his sickness uh, faster. Okay. Buddha was encouraging uh, monks and uh, you know everybody uh, to to be a uh, wise, um, obedient, uh, humble, um, sick person. If you, if you get sick and if you want to uh, achieve a speedy recovery, uh, we all need to have these qualities, right? We need to do what is suitable. Right. 
right so the the, the it will not get worse and we need to know the moderation in what is suitable oh, of course even in the suitable things like what what we should eat right. how should we like you know uh, behave and all these things we there are limits even even in the things that are suitable and we should take medicine at the right time right you see how it is important and and the uh, and also we should accurately report our symptoms by saying when our sickness is getting worse getting better or staying at the same and that helps for the care right basically that for the doctor for the nurse we should not hide anything about our sickness. And also, we should become um, strong in our mind to endure the physical pain, sharp, severe, you know, uh, and even life-threatening pain we should bear. Otherwise, it's very difficult for the doctor or the nurse to, uh, to help us. If we are screaming, and crying all the time, lamenting, uh, and we shouldn't know that. We should, shouldn't do those things. We should bear the pain. <clears throat> so you can you see now? Uh, you better understand. Uh, uh, yeah, Pante. You understand it? Huh? Yes, Pante. I mean, it's a, a normal... Well, it's not that not difficult. I mean, it's just a normal um, suta about the daily... Yeah. Yeah, and the day-to-day -day life thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank Are you happy you now? Monday. Yes, I'm happy. Thank you. It's clear now. So you had good karma. We found the sutta. <laughs> I thought we don't have that good karma. Sadhu, 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 bante. Yeah, and another lesson. Uh, even though the friends say that it is in the Anguttara Nikaya 3, yeah. <laughs> and when you read the sutta, if, if Buddha is teaching about five things, Right. Uh, you know, people can uh, forget things and make mistakes. That's normal. So uh, maybe your friend um, uh, was talking yeah. about a different sutta, you know. So, it, but always, uh, if you see, if you read five things, Buddha is teaching five things, mm -hmm. a patient with these five qualities, then you should think, oh, so this is uh, from uh, Book of the Fives. Yes. Like that. So, isn't that an amazing organizing structure of the suttas to find? Like the Arhans did that, the liberated monks did that in the first Dhamma council uh, after the Buddha's passing away. They are the ones who arranged these suttas in uh, like that, in that order, in the uh, when Buddha, uh, all the discourses, like Buddha was talking about one thing, two thing, three things, and then the Arahants um, organized them in such a way so that the future generation, the people can find those suttas uh, easier um, by going to the book of the ones, book of the twos, book of the threes, like that. Uh, that's uh, unbelievable organizing. That's right. See like, see like, like, like when we try to find suttas, otherwise how do we find like, there are 18,000 discourses. We, we should worship the Arahan Sangha who, who did this amazing thing in the first Dhamma Council. And how much happiness we gain when we, when the things get clarified and, you know, we understand things clearly how much happiness we gain <clears throat> Doubt, doubts are removed path becomes clearer good <clears throat>